Mark Zuckerberg rules an empire of 2.6 billion people. The three biggest social media apps, Facebook, Instagram and WhatsApp, form a universe of ultimate control over how people communicate, connect, get information and consume entertainment. But Zuckerberg only invented Facebook, sort of. With Instagram and WhatsApp, it was just a clear-cut strategic acquisition worth of $20 billion. Despite the change of legal ownership, neither Instagram nor WhatsApp were under the full control of Zuckerberg. The Facebook CEO promised the developers of both apps significant autonomy to continue their development without his interference. Recently, this deal of trust has come to an end. Starting this year, Mark Zuckerberg announced a plan to integrate messaging platforms of WhatsApp, Instagram and Facebook Messenger. A plan that has led to internal clashes and departure of people who felt betrayed by Zuckerberg's unilateral push to take over. All of Facebook's IT department, thousands of developers, are going to devote the next year or so to merge the backbone of the three platforms into one so that their users can seamlessly send messages to each other across all three apps. The job won't be done until it's possible for WhatsApp users to send messages to Instagram users even if they don't have Instagram accounts at all. After a decade of privacy invasion and scandalous cases of mishandling of user data, manipulation, propaganda and censorship, the move to integrate all three platforms into one seems that much more bizarre as the integration could open up the ecosystem to even more security vulnerabilities and information manipulation. Zuckerberg promised to implement end-to-end -end encryption into all three apps ahead of the integration to ensure user privacy. End-to-end -end encryption is becoming a popular marketing buzzword, mainly thanks to WhatsApp spreading the awareness about it to a massive audience in the process of becoming more popular than Facebook's flagship messaging app. Which is both good, but also destructive. WhatsApp encrypts contents of the messages in a way that can't be read in transit by third parties, including WhatsApp itself. However, what constitutes end-to-end -end encryption doesn't have a single unified definition, nor implementation. A commonly accepted definition of end-to-end -end encryption is that it's such a communication where only the communicating participants are able to read the messages. Not even the providers of their services can. However, it's only the definition that many people in the field would agree on. The practical implementation of end-to-end -end encryption is a root of major disagreements. ProtonMail, for example, offers implementation of end-to-end -end encryption in their mobile apps as well as inside a web browser. ProtonMail itself claims they can't read users' emails. But if a ProtonMail user logs in to their email account through a web browser instead of a mobile app, ProtonMail could easily execute a malicious JavaScript and read their emails without the user ever noticing. And for this reason, some researchers like Nadim Kobesi, the developer of CryptoCAD, believe this fails to meet the requirements of end-to-end -end encryption. Developers of Signal Private Messenger also share this opinion and straight out refuse to provide a web version of their app. Zuckerberg could very well come up with his own version of end-to-end -end encryption and just like ProtonMail, get away with claiming they could never access their users' messages when they easily could without ever being detected. When it comes to user privacy, one of the key elements to actually verify whether end-to-end -end encryption is implemented correctly is to make the software open source, so that users can see what their software is made of or choose to trust someone other than their provider to audit the source code. And this is a problem with what could be inside Zuckerberg's mind when he talks about end-to-end -end encryption. No matter how many developers are going to be paid for its implementation, the ultimate solution is always going to be a company's secret. Users will never be able to verify what kind of code they're running and they could never fully trust that Facebook correctly implements end-to-end -end encryption in all three messaging platforms. Especially when Facebook has all the financial incentives to monetize user data rather than to secure it. WhatsApp currently implements Signal's encryption protocol, which is considered a pretty strong standard when it comes to mobile messengers. But whether that is going to remain a standard for all three apps during integration is a mystery. So it all comes down to trust. Can you trust someone like Mark Zuckerberg with your data and your privacy? Facebook has a long track record of violating and invading users' privacy. 
from opening up access to their data to third-party developers and advertisers, through sharing user data without their explicit consent, to tracking non-Facebook users and targeting them with ads. This boiling pot blew up in Zuckerberg's face during the congressional hearings over the Cambridge Analytica scandal. Mark apologized. And it was my mistake. And I'm sorry. He promised to change. So here are a few things that we are doing to address this and to prevent it from happening again. And he reassured us that Facebook is no longer selling user data. We sell data to advertisers. And we do not sell data to advertisers. But is it? You see, it boils down to the definition problem again. As the New York Times reported last year, Facebook partnered with at least 60 device makers, including Apple, Samsung, Amazon and Microsoft, to share with them personal data of their users. These partnerships gave the involved companies access to users' data and their friends' data even if they opted out of any data sharing. Facebook led people to believe that data sharing with developers ended in 2014, but the company never disclosed that they exempted device makers from this lockdown. Facebook's response? Data sharing with device makers is fine, because they are just extending the Facebook experience. We do not sell data to advertisers. Before the end of 2018, internal documents from Facebook revealed that the social network has given big tech companies exclusively intrusive access to users' personal data without ever disclosing these secret partnerships. Facebook allowed Microsoft's Bing search engine to see the names of virtually all of Facebook's friends without consent and gave Netflix and Spotify the ability to read Facebook users' private messages. Among more than 150 companies are online retailers, entertainment sites, automakers and media organizations. Data of hundreds of millions of users were compromised every month. We do not sell data to advertisers. Trust and Mark Zuckerberg don't get along very well. WhatsApp developers learned their lesson the hard way. When Facebook was acquiring WhatsApp, Zuckerberg didn't just promise autonomy for WhatsApp developers. He also promised to respect privacy of WhatsApp users and not transfer or merge WhatsApp data with Facebook data. Not two years passed before Zuckerberg broke his promise and began sharing phone numbers from WhatsApp with Facebook. How is he gonna treat trust of everyone once the integration gives him full control? But let's assume Facebook ends up building strong encryption into all three apps that'll be enabled by default and no text messages will be read by anyone. Here's the catch. Even with strong encryption in place, Zuckerberg can still pull your private and personal information from other avenues. The integration will give Facebook an ultimate domination in the world of data. It will enable them to more precisely track identities of up to 3 billion people, assigning them unique advertising IDs and collecting information about them across websites, apps and devices, including what people search for, how they use their apps, what they watch on YouTube, when they go to a hospital, what they shop for, or when they visit a movie theater. Zuckerberg's family of apps is a backdoor into the minds of billions of people. Since its inception, Facebook has never stopped expanding ways of collecting and tracking users' personal information. Do you want to give Mark Zuckerberg another chance? Or is it time for you to leave his empire for good? As a law-abiding citizen, you have nothing to hide even from Facebook. But your goodwill doesn't prevent Zuckerberg from exploiting your data by racially segregating you on the markets for housing, employment and credit, or by politically excluding you from participation on public forums. Whatever decision you make, remember that knowledge is power, and Mark Zuckerberg has a lot of it.